But the future is uh, unclear not only for Greece but for the actual Eurozone itself. Now let's discuss this with one of the architects of the Euro, Bernard Liotard. Bernard, thank you so much for coming on RT. Um, you played such an integral role in, in the, the establishment of, of the currency itself. Um, in your opinion, what has gone wrong? Well, we didn't just change the currency, we also changed the rules of the relationships between the central banks and governments, and that was not part of the deal initially. Uh, this is something that has been added uh, at the moment when the euro was launched and had been incorporated in other laws and treaties. But the technical part of the currency uh, foundation, the convergence system, which is the part that I was involved with uh, when I was at the central bank uh, in Belgium, which had the responsibility for that particular phase, uh, that was not what we expected. That had been added on it. Did you ever foresee? Uh, a, a, sorry, did you ever foresee a time which you know we possibly may um, have to face very shortly, where you've got a member state perhaps leaving the euro? Did you think that was a possibility? Well, actually, that was decided that it would not be an option. That was part of the conditions, the political conditions that we were given at the moment of the design. There would be a one-way street, and it was quite clear that that was supposed to be the objective. Uh, the ultimate objective, of course, was to have create convergence on a political level and an economic level in parallel. Uh, and, well, uh, with these additional changes that were introduced, again, politically, uh, that has not happened, okay? So we're now in a place where I frankly never expected we would be. Do you think the euro itself as a currency is at risk here? There's a lot at risk uh, because we're playing on chicken uh, on all sides, not just the Greek side, but also the uh, European side and actually even the IMF side has actually now making a different viewpoint than the Europeans themselves. So the, there seems to be, uh, well, uncertainty being fed uh, by all parties in this game. And uh, uncertainty is not good <laughs> for, for anything, really. Um, so certainly not for the economy or for investments uh, in economies. I mean, the, so the, yes, Eurozone, is the, Eurozone is a, the Eurozone is really, it's an unprecedented experiment. Nobody could know for sure what was going to happen. If Greece leaves, do you think there's a danger others could follow? Well, it would be a precedent uh, that uh, is not part of any treaty, <laughs> okay? So we're outside of the framework. But by the way, personally, I don't believe that the choice that is being given is the appropriate choice. I think 100% in or 100% out is in fact a false dilemma. There are other solutions available and uh, what's strange is that they're never talked about uh, publicly anywhere. Uh, I don't see any reason why Greece could not have two currencies, right? Be participant in the euro for tourism and for shipping, which are the largest uh, sectors of the economy, but at the same time have some neo dragma, which is uh, playing uh, on different rules uh, and uh, which is providing uh, capacity to actually reanimate the economy at the grassroots level a lot easier than what happens with the euro now. So I think there's a third solution, which is let's innovate. Uh, and uh, this is actually, uh, there are precedents for this. I know economic theory never has been assuming the possibility of having several currencies in parallel, but in practice we do. Uh, Switzerland has for, for the last 80 years been using two currencies. You have the Swiss franc and a business to business currency, which is working in parallel and been stabilizing the economy. And never talked about, but it's working. Uh, in Britain, if you're a British company, you can choose to have your uh, balance sheets and your taxes uh, paid in uh, euros, so you can actually, for all practical purposes, be part of the eurozone and at the same time in a British pound economy. 
So these Bernard, I just wanted to ask you, and, you, you mentioned the alternatives. If, if they do exist, why are they not being offered, as it seems they're not, to Greece? I mean, is this about exerting power or is it just fear of changing the status quo? Well, it would create a precedent for a very different way of addressing economic problems. Uh, we're basically dealing with either orthodoxy in a classical old way or getting ready for the information age because basically that's what I believe is, is going to be needed and necessary and we're delaying the process. We're still using an industrial age monetary construct in a period where we have technologies to do things differently. Every Greek citizen has a mobile phone, basically, or at least every family does. So one could create new ways of uh, payment systems with dual currencies. And all that is possible. It hasn't been done before, although there's no reason not to do it now. It's certainly better than what's being debated. Do you think there's perhaps a danger that the big hitters in the Eurozone are afraid that if Greece does go it alone, they might actually succeed survival alone? Well, let me give you the precedent of another country which uh, nobody talks about these days, which is uh, Iceland. Iceland was the country that had been biggest, worst hit back in 2007-2008, uh, and it has disappeared from the news. And one of the reasons it has simply disappeared is that they didn't do what the official orthodoxy was requiring them to do. They let the banks go bankrupt. They put the bankers in prison, <laughs> and now they're in the process of deciding on having a currency issued by governments rather than through bank debt. This is a very different environment, but it's completely taboo in the mainstream media. And uh, let's just take a look at it's the, working. And as you said, it, it does appear to be working. Let, let's just take a look at the near future, if we may. Um, what do you think will happen? If uh, Greece doesn't make it, its next repayment July 20th, uh, the uh, European Central Bank shuts off uh, vital liquidity to the Greek banks, what will happen next? Well, banks will be closed. They are closed already for all technical purposes. The closure will go on longer. Uh, we have had actually a precedent of that nature with Argentina. Uh, but again, I claim that this is not necessary we can actually solve the problems differently uh, than what's being debated. That's the key point. Bernard, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thanks so much for coming on RT, speaking to uh, one of the men behind the implementation of the Euro. That's Bernard Liotard.